Why would you use a truck when you got this bad boy? You're good to go. There's a time and a place for a truck, like this. Behind me is a 270 square meter slab about to get poured, a little bit too big for the hand mixer, so we've booked concrete trucks first thing tomorrow morning, and the places are gonna rip into it. Whether you're using the hand mixer or the concrete truck, basically it's the same principle. It's a big barrel on the back of something that turns around. The difference is the big barrel on the back of a concrete truck holds about six cube of concrete. It would be pretty foolish to do something of this size by the hand mixer, not impossible. And I have talked to one old school builder that remembered doing slabs by hand. We will use the concrete truck, we'll use the pumps, we'll use the places, and for a big job like that, that makes sense. It means that our builders can keep building, and we let those guys who are specialized in that field do what they do best. But there is a time and place for using the hand mixer. Like the little studio we did in the backyard in Silver Street. If it's under one cube, it's usually easier for us to sort it out ourselves. We'll get the builders mix on the trailer, okay. couple of bags of cement, get the mixer going, and barrow it to where we need to go. We can do that within a couple of hours. Examples of that would be deck and fence posts, the piles on a little tiny studio. When we do those drainage retention tanks, we need to do a little slab under those. We've done a heat pump pad. Basically, when you do a cube of concrete, you get charged a small load fee by the mixers anyway. You're at the whim of the concrete plant, the driver, the other deliveries they've got on the day, and when you've got a little job, often you're the lowest priority out of all of those things. And so, if we've got the mixer, we've got access to the builders mix and the cement, we've got the manpower. Yeah, we are able to do it when we need to do it. I think that's the key, it's that control of timing. For example, that little studio, we wanted concrete last thing on a Thursday afternoon so that it set over the weekend and it was ready for us on a Monday. We couldn't get the concrete truck until the Monday morning. So we did a couple of hours work on the Thursday afternoon. We mixed it by hand, we set the posts, it set and went hard all weekend. And then it was ready for us to cut the piles, put the bearers in, all of that stuff on the Monday. Now if we'd waited for the concrete truck on Monday, we'd be at the whim of their schedule. The only job we'd be able to do on that site that day is pour the concrete. Then we'd have to wait for it to go off. By mixing it, we retained control of the timeline. You're saving money and it's quite meditative. Just jumping and shoveling in and watching it go round and round and thinking about all the worries of your life just swirling around in a bucket. If you like the mix of videos we're producing, go ahead, click subscribe, help us go up to 10K. But that said, I think about one cube, we could push it, one and a half cube. Once you get past that, it starts to become a little bit ridiculous. And that's when I would start thinking about using a truck and using that manpower to move it from the truck and placing it and all of that sort of stuff instead of mixing it. If you're only getting a cube, you're not able to get the full cube from the truck anyway. So by doing it by hand, we're using only what we need, when we need it, less wastage. There is a time and a place for both.